Hey guys, I'm TADDY. I don't know, but today we are back with Destructible. Um, I forgot what the title was today. I thought I looked at it before entering in today's podcast, but I guess I didn't. Because I don't remember anything. But, um, yeah. Uh, we're gonna just jump into it. If you want to see my Last of Us reaction that I totally did not cry at, because we all know what happens, um, check out my, um, my reaction, it is out now in full length, so that is on my Patreon, like always. But with that being said, let's go into Distractable. Alexa, play the new episode of Distractable. Getting Distractable from Spotify. Here's the latest episode, The Ick. What is it? This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Helix Sleep. Oh, Mark, you know what's great? Mm -hmm. What? The Sleeping. ick. Getting oh. so much comfortable sleep on our Helix mattresses. Like this, I, like yeah, a I scratch? Think about shit all the time. You have no idea. Bro. I do too. I think I about just, it so much. Oh my God, I wake up thinking, my I slept so good. I basically wake up in that way where your eyes just kind of drift open. And you're like, oh. Yeah, no, me too. Last night, uh, between uh, feeding the baby and uh, changing the eight diapers that he went through, I must have got. Seven, eight minutes of really. Yeah, we get it, Bob. Sleep. You're a dad now. You have baby, baby this, baby that. I took the Helix sleep quiz and I got matched with the perfect mattress in under two minutes. You know, Helix lineup includes 14 unique mattresses, including collections like luxury models, mattress for big and tall sleepers, and even a mattress made just for kids. I took the quiz and I bought a really great mattress. And it's like really comfortable and it just sits there. Oh, you should try using it. Yeah, you should sleep on it. Mocking me. You should sleep on it. The bed laughs at me as I walk past it back and forth, cleaning poop off of myself. Oh, this dad thing again. Oh, no, right. take it off of that subject. Did you know Helix has been awarded the number one mattress picked by GQ and Wired Magazine? I'll show the bed who's number one. I'll show the bed who's comfortable. Okay. Well, the bed can show all of you because Helix is offering up to three hundred fifty dollars off all mattress orders and two free pillows for our listeners. Go to HelixSleep.com/distractible. This is their best offer yet, and it won't last long with Helix. Better sleep starts now. Good evening, gentle listener, and welcome to Distractible. A Wood Elf production. This week, Bob gives copious convincing head, but oddly doesn't like fluffers, sneemen, or ball bashing. World Supreme Wade has pretty digits and likes soft things, not hard boners in his mouth. Mark opens uh. the Urban Dictionary <laughs> and drops a failed college dating story and develops breast milk ice cream. Yes, it's time for the ick. Now sit back and what? prepare to be distracted. And enjoy the show. Thank you. Hello and welcome to Distractable, the only podcast that you'd ever need in your life to get you through your sorry, sad, so sad, very sorry, sad days. I'm your host, Mark. I won last week, which means that I'm going to be the judge. And if you've never been here on Distractable, you know that me as the judge, well, you don't know. Wait, I'm assuming that happens. You don't know that me as the judge am judging my fellow not hosts. Wow, we used to have a script for this. Oh, man. These other two human beings that are not in the room with me, but I'm hearing their voice in my head, and now you are too. Bob and Wade! Hello! Hey, that was very clear, concise, and I understood it perfectly. Everybody confused? <laughs> if you've never been here, you know what's going on. Yeah, no, I love the idea of Mark as a teacher. Day one of the semester, he walks in and he's like, You've all never been here, so you should know my name is Mark. And if you definitely already don't know, this class is space. Space 106. Here's your final exam. Mm -hmm, yeah. We're taking the final today, and the rest of the semester we'll spend learning all this stuff you should have already known. I'm handing out your syllabus. It's multiple choice. Uh, there you go. There you go. <laughs> As you hand each student the syllabus, you got a B. <laughs> you got a C minus. I am having been disappointed. I will am having been disappointed. You know what I mean. Yes, yes, of course. Anyway, so uh, how are you guys doing on this fine, lovely Tuesday? Monday, Monday. We're good, we're good. I'm very tired. Yeah, Wade, Wade's had a long night. It's this non-baby life is exhausting. Uh, I can only imagine, man. Oh, man. You guys are never going to guess what my small talk is about for today. <laughs> is it about TikToks? Uh, different types of beer you've had whenever you've gone to local breweries in your area lately? Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. For all the times I've gone outside of my house <laughs> while the sun was up. <laughs> yes. uh, no, Sorry. actually, though, I have a one month old baby, uh, listeners. So, yeah. That's what's happening. But also, Congrats. Cold Fusion. Oh. Cold Fusion. I was wondering if Mark would have heard about this. That I did, but that was unexpected. Is your baby involved in Cold Fusion somehow? Um. Yeah, the baby has stirred so much cold emptiness in his heart that he has caused cold fusion internally. Wow. The baby will someday live in a world powered by cold fusion where uh, the energy is unlimited and the problems are all different and Didn't socially. We... What? Did we talk about this last week with the fusion thing? What? what? I thought we brought up... Never mind, maybe I'm dreaming it. Go ahead. <laughs> I meant to bring it up last week, but I don't know if you've heard. I've had a baby. But no, uh... No, the, the uh, Lawrence Livermore National Laboratory achieved a positive net gain fusion reaction. I don't know the words, but they essentially made a fusion reaction happen where more energy was created than they put into it. Mm -hmm. It's a scientific first and establishes the fundamental principle that cold fusion is actually possible and could be a harnessable power source of almost infinite supply with basically no waste product, as far as I understand it. That's probably not true. Well, I swear we talked to that, my chat or no, chat audience, no, the viewer, listeners, whoever you are, <laughs> let us know in the comment, red subreddit that if we did, <sighs> why don't you let me take over? No, <laughs> it feels like a long time for me, but it's only been a week since we've been together doing this, right? Right. All right, Mark, I forgot your intro was so much cleaner than what I just said. You know, I feel like it's just establishing the theme of the episode today. <laughs> <laughs> and I had to circle back into a perfect segue. Are we getting older? <laughs> well, it's something to that. Look, I just got to say... People have started to notice um, the, the quality is uh, always good, but the uh, content is inconsistent and circular. It's actually shaped like a full circle. They've noticed that we've been repeating some topics these days, and, you know, we've been talking about the same thing no, we haven't. over and over again. Yeah, so They're just complaining, which sounds like a bad habit, and we're going to do an episode about that one day. Someday. Someday we will. And uh, they've been so kind to provide a list of new video or episode <laughs> ideas. They're so tired of our shit. They're giving us topics now. Yeah, so I, 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 pulled, I pulled up uh, a list here of things that we could uh, talk about and the various things <laughs> that they've talked about is do an episode about getting older so that yep. that's pretty cool um, I like that one. talking about childhood stories you know there was that one we could talk about our college days uh now hear me out mark hosts and he could talk about his college days pretty sure bob was there so he could help too okay haven't done that before yep. Yep. however there is one here that I'm going to steal that was not actually highly rated that I have confirmed we have never done before. And this will be I the- I hope that's accurate. I no. hope, God, I really hope so. I haven't, <laughs> <laughs> I actually haven't double checked too hard. <laughs> You confirmed. It's confirmed. Yeah. Should I wait? By should experts. I, should I bowl forward or should I? Should I? I ask think you should confirm. No, keep going. Actually, never, confirm. No, never ask. All right. We're gonna. <laughs> Oh, God, now I'm not sure. Oh, God. Today's topic is about phobias. Have we? Have we? Oh, no. <laughs> oh, no. No, no, no. no, no. <laughs> no, no we... Well, how similar to a fear is a phobia? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I seem to recall there may be an episode of this podcast. Fears and fetishes. Fears and fetishes. Fears and fetishes. fetishes. That's very different. That's very uh -huh. different. I agree. Yes. It's almost like a okay. good bad habit versus just no, a regular no, no, bad no, habit. No, 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 no. They're because... basically the same words. No, no, We're no, getting no. older despite we're not getting younger. No, 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 no. There's... Yeah, there's... No, let's do phobies. <laughs> Beautiful. Let me just see what I said last time we didn't talk about this. There was something else that I discovered here that I wanted to address. There was another subreddit that I found in my process of doing intense, strenuous research oh, yeah. uh, for this topic episode. It's a subreddit called World Wade Supremacy. Excuse me? Wade, did you know this exists? Did you make this? Did I don't remember. This? I'm getting older. It's actually just Wade with like a two dozen alternate accounts. It, it is strange because it is a subreddit this entire 
entirely dedicated to you, Wade. I didn't know this existed. 251 members. That's 100 more people than there are Pokemon in the world, right? Wow. Yeah. Uh, yes. I, don't, I don't know that, actually. Oh, man. There's a lot more than 150 Pokemon. That was the original. Well, those are the only ones I count. Mm -hmm. Those are the only ones good ones. I yeah. agree. That's before the dark type came and ruined my psychics. I don't like Trash Can Dave. I don't even know what that means. And Puddle of Water. <laughs> <laughs> I know you don't, buddy. I know you don't. Look, I looked at every single Pokemon. I still couldn't tell you who's who, so I don't know what anything's going on down there. And he's you smashing past the it. That you'd fuck? Uh, I, if I saw him again, I definitely would. I'm sure that if I went through all 800 and something, I would be very consistent with my choice of which one I would bone. <laughs> I'm Didn't you already do that? that? I like that as an experiment. Once a week, every week for like half a year, <laughs> do the same Smasher Pass Pokemon one. Uh, See how consistent you are with it. Yeah, exactly. Perfection. Well, besides the that. Is, is this what my brain is like? What the subreddit is like? It is a little concerning, some of those. But at least it's not like a super, super, way over the top kind of adoration that you might see in other subreddits. So, very nice. Mm -hmm. But, that being said. I do have some other part that's not particularly phobia related because as people who have been listening to this know, that's not the name of this episode. It's the ick. name of this episode is called The Ick. Wade, I'm going to play something for you. Stop, please. That is very uncomfortable. It's like someone's trying to squeak styrofoam in my ears. But it also sounds like someone's chasing a cat with a squirt bottle. It is, in fact, styrofoam. Yeah, that's not the squeaky noise, but that's definitely like the someone's trying to rub it together and it's not quite making the noise that kills me yet. Right, it's okay. a crumbly styrofoam sound. Oh, God. It made me tense up. Like, I really tensed up when I heard it there. Okay. Remember when we used All to right. do in-person streams and I would always bring my monitor packed in styrofoam and it was so funny? <laughs> yeah. Great so funny. It was, it was so funny. Everybody loved it. You know, that's one of the worst things about growing up was everyone's so excited to like get their new toy or new thing and open it up. And it's like the part I dread the most because if it's packed in styrofoam, I either have to suffer through it or have someone else do it for me. <laughs> <laughs> It's just, the ex it's just the dread. You got new technology for Christmas this past month, and you had the box in front of you, and you were like, Holly? I do that sometimes. Can you, can you open my toy? There's a certain, like, I, I don't know how to describe it, but even, like, the thicker styrofoam, sometimes it's like, okay, this is bad, but I can do it. And sometimes I just, like, I lay a finger on it to see if I can pull that one out. It's like, no, I can't do this one, and I have to leave and let someone else do it. Well, wait, how about, how about this? Mm. You can stop that, yeah. It's not pleasant, but it's not. It's That's, a, oh, God. I, I don't have a thing about styrofoam, but that was unpleasantly squeaky. I'll give you that. Yeah. Some of the squeaks were definitely close to the styrofoam squeak, and some of them just sounded like you were stepping on a squeaker toy. What if I play both of them at once? Okay, I got to, I can't. I can't do that. Right. I can't do that. I took my headphones off. I can't hear you guys. Wade well, is okay, actively right. trying not to throw up right now from that Okay. Sound. So Dude, Mark's not lit up anymore, so I think I'm safe. Uh, you're safe. I'm not doing it anymore. So uh, what this episode is about is about the ick. It's very different from a phobia. So this is a patently different idea than just yeah. phobias. Yep. And I do want to credit the person that said, I just closed the tab. <sighs> oh, uh, control shift T, Mark, quick. <laughs> control shift. Oh, you're right. You're right. You're right. Alt F4. You're right. Hold on. Oh, no. Oh, it, it un. It uncollapsed all the topics. Where the hell? Oh, I meant to no. search for the egg. I just searched for Alt F4. God damn. It. Okay, got it. So it's it's nothing and no one here on Reddit. This one did not get that many upvotes, but I think it's very good because the ick is different. Sometimes you can get the ick from a lot of different things. It could be a singular source that repeats. For Wade, it's styrofoam. For me, it's the top felt of cars, amongst many other things. Like if there's like an old car from the 90s, it's got those felt roofs. Some some new cars have them too. But if I oh, like touch the them. Oh, velour texture. Yeah, yeah. If I touch them with my finger, it's not even so much the sound but the sound is bad but if i touch it myself it's even worse i imagine wade that's the same with styrofoam like the sound's bad yeah touching it would be even worse i'm not afraid of styrofoam i'm not afraid of cotton balls but like pulling a cotton ball apart oh. or yeah hearing styrofoam yeah those oh i love cotton balls I love cotton ball. no oh god oh. it's like a worm is massaging my ear brain i can hear it in my head i can feel yeah. it in my teeth oh. yeah it, you feel it oh. in your teeth right oh. Yeah, only if you bite it with your teeth. That sounds like you're deep throating your microphone. That doesn't sound like that. <laughs> no, that sounds like this. <laughs> <laughs> that 
Shouldn't have done that. Who no. was listening to this episode at work? Because <laughs> now you're fired. <laughs> I hope someone's mom walked in the room right at that moment. Nope, my mom's sleeping. Oh, well, oh, honey, what are you? Oh, oh, oh. No, that can't be I'm to give you two points for that. that, 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 that really well done. Worth it. Yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, wait, I'll give you one just for making you listen to the styrofoam and using Oh, thanks. Example. I'm glad that my actual suffering is worth one point. Well, well, why do you sound sarcastic about it? I could put the whole microphone in my mouth. Oh, goddamn. Yeah. Well, impressive. Yeah, what Bob just went through, first of all, I went through a very equal. Ah, uh, take your point away. God damn it. Wait. Yeah, that's right. Take another one. All right, negative one. Good, thanks. <laughs> I see we've circled back to the beginning of the show. Yeah, Wade. Better Wade is here all of a sudden. It's crazy how that happens. Classic Wade moment. All right, well, Wade's at a rocking negative one and Bob's at plus two. We haven't even started the episode yet. We haven't? I thought that we were being icky. No, no, no. It no. Was, he was just setting it up. Yeah, it was, was just the it, it was setting it up. Yeah, now, uh, now I'm kicking it off. Introduction. Oh, introduction. I. Yeah? I'm not giving you a point for that. Uh -huh. But like, how do you feel if I tell you to uh, visualize uh, uh, a cow uh, hoof without <laughs> the hoof part? Oh, uh, why are you doing that? Oh, sorry, does that make you feel icky here and lose three points? <laughs> well, I guess you know that's true. All right, I'll take three points away from me. Yeah, good. All right, glad we're on the same page. All right, the score is Bob two, way negative one, me at negative three. I am this is probably my worst performance yet on an episode. Good. Well, you're not losing, so that's pretty good. That man. is true. That is true. Uh, but what I'm going to pass it off is to you guys for this. So it's not necessarily tryptophobia or phobias in general. These are things that could be texture-based, food-based, feeling-based, the clothing-based, like bad clothing on your skin, things that give you the ick, things that if you eat too much of. So there are certain things that give you the ick where you, if you eat too much of it, you suddenly realize, like, I've never hated this more in my life if you get past a certain point. You know, a certain food's up to a certain point, the most delicious thing in the world, then suddenly I I wish I was dead, you know, that kind of feel. Oh, yeah. I've got I think I've definitely feel that way, way, but I don't think, I can't think of anything right now. Top I've, been, I've been thinking, I have a couple, yeah. I've mm -hmm. got some, some, I think I have a kind of controversial one, too. I'm interested to see what people think about it. Do you guys think that you could put this in a title format to see who goes first? Then we'll just go back and forth from there so we don't do titles for all of them. Okay. Um. Yeah, I have a title. Mm -hmm. Yeah, sure. I got one. All right, I'm ready. It's ruined. I like it. I like it. Okay, Bob. Actually, I need a um, I need a prop for this. Hang on. Oh my God. Wrong. <laughs> oh. 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 That's my title. I don't like it. I pick Wade's. That microfiber cloth was very dusty. <laughs> <laughs> what did you do to it? I put it in my mouth. There's a lot of things going in your mouth this episode. I feel like we need to switch uh, topics. No. Nope. What can we put in Bob's mouth? <laughs> I mean, we are not putting anything in my mouth. <laughs> well, we're a team. We should decide by a vote. <laughs> You're right. Let's put it to a vote. Uh, I say I. I. I say I. Bob? I don't even know where we're voting. He said I, I heard I. I. He said I. 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 All right. When we eventually move to video format, we will uh, do that. <laughs> you know, when we do that in the future. All right. I'll remember that for that. The subreddit will remember, unfortunately, <laughs> too. <laughs> Said they were pushed over Bob's mouth. Uh, Where is it? I've been counting the days, crossing off my cat. Anyway, wait, take over. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by BetterHelp. Guys, the baby's here. Which one? My baby. Mandy had the baby, and now it's ours. Oh, you're a dad. Yay! Yay! Babies are hard. It's stressful. You don't get to sleep. And neither does Mandy get to sleep, and the baby doesn't sleep, and only one out of the three of us screams about that. And I'll give you one guess who it is. Uh, I've been thinking about maybe giving therapy a try. Mm. I, heard, I heard better help is a great option. There's this drill sergeant I know down the street who's real good at screaming. You said you did, weren't screaming enough. I think I am screaming enough by my own standards. But is, is he as convenient, flexible, and affordable 
as better help is i mean he kind of just shows up in my backyard and just starts screaming about random crap what is with california where y'all have random drill sergeants and gurus that just show up at your houses you want guru no 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 bob was right better help is definitely a better option than a guru or a drill sergeant better help is online i can just put like headphones in or just send a text message there's no noise that's gonna wake up the baby if a miracle happens and he sleeps for an hour sure i'm sure the drill sergeant has a license he wouldn't he wouldn't have all those weapons if he didn't have some kind of a license so i mean I, you're being a little judgmental it's, that just doesn't sound like it matches up to better help i gotta be honest i mean he's already on the way so what does it matter what yeah he'll be there look the baby just fell asleep for the first time in like three days you're joking right if you want to live a more empowered life therapy can get you there Visit BetterHelp.com slash Distractable Today to get 10% off your first month. That's B-E-T-T-E-R-H-E-L-P dot com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Mint Mobile. You always like spending tons of money on phone plans. I love it so much I want to kiss my money. Start over. Start over. Start it over. Start it over. Start it over. You boys <laughs> love spending tons of money on phone plans. I can't get all this money out of my arms fast enough. You're supposed to say no. You say no. And then I'm going to tell you how that mobile is just $15 a month. Try it again. Try it again. Okay. All right. All right. Do you guys love spending tons of money on phone plans? No. No, I do not. Please continue. By going online only limiting traditional costs of retail, Met Mobile can pass significant savings on to you, so you only spend 15 bucks a month. Oh, excellent. Thank you for the hot tip, friend. Okay, a little bit more enthusiasm. Do you guys love unlimited talk and text and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network? Because if so, you will love Met Mobile. I winged a raccoon with my car the other day, and I didn't stop to see if it lived. <laughs> Starting uh, over? Cut, cut, cut. Did you know all plans? come with unlimited talk, text, and high-speed data delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You know that way. Which part are we doing? Did you know you could use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and switch easily in minutes with eSIM? Yeah, switch easily! Yeah, eSIM. That's how I was going to say that. You cut me off. Can we circle back to my raccoon bit? I feel like that was really strong. So get your wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month and get the plan shipped to your door for free. Go to mintmobile.com slash distractable. That's M-I-N-T-M-O-B-I-L-E dot com slash D-I-S-T-R-A-C-T-I-B-L-E. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com slash distractable. I winged a raccoon with my car the other day. This episode of Distractable is sponsored by Tommy John. Winter mornings are brutal. So here's my tip for tackling the day in comfort. Don't hit a raccoon on your commute to work and then stop but not call anyone because you don't know who to call about that. I thought you were going to tell us about comfortable Tommy John loungewear. Yeah. Oh, and wear Tommy John clothes. Loungewear. When you hit raccoons? Yeah, when you start the year in Tommy John, you're that much more comfortable when you accidentally mow down the raccoon no, 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 that no, no, you no, didn't you're see just, crossing the... Uh, no? You're just that much more comfortable so you can do everything better. You don't have to hit raccoons. Please don't hit raccoons. Just be comfortable. I remember I was wearing not Tommy John's and I hit an owl. Ah, uh, see? No, no. With over 20 million pairs sold and thousands of five-star reviews, people love Tommy John. They have loungewear, pajamas, underwear, dozens of comfort innovations, and no lint balls or fuzz. They're so comfortable. They're not messy. They're great. And there's no hitting of animals. I bought one pair of loungewear and after wearing it for two days, got all the colors that are available. The only place I don't wear them is when I'm standing over the dismembered corpses of my it's animal in victims. The shower. In the shower. There's no animals mentioned. I love wearing my Tommy John shorts because it feels like there isn't a school of ferrets trying to get okay. revenge on me for what All I right. just did to their leaders. Get 20% off your first order at TommyJohn.com slash distractible. 20% off. Right now at tommyjohn.com slash distractable. See site for details. No animals were harmed in the making of this ad. All right. Uh, just literally yesterday, I got an order of chicken and dumplings from a restaurant. Not not Cracker Barrel, but like a different restaurant. And I was okay. so excited to eat it. And like, I went to take a bite. And you know how like the dumplings normally have like that, I don't know how it's just called it, like a noodly dumpling texture. And the chicken is usually like little chicken bites. And you cut them up and you just have a bite of like both. And it's so good with like the, the gravy and everything else. Mm -hmm. But 
I encountered that horrible feeling of, okay, this is some overcooked, mushy food, I can't wait to eat it, and then you bite into something that you can't break with your teeth. Like, your mouth oh. gets that feeling, it's like, oh no. It's like, I... what is it? What is in my mouth that isn't soft, chewy chicken or dumpling? Oh no. And I pulled something out, and there was a bone of some kind. I don't know what, but it was right in my food. Well, okay. I was almost relieved to see it was a bone, yeah. but then it still yeah. made me want to gag and throw up. All That's right. kind of what you hope it is. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, oh no, depleted uranium. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> The yeah. worst is for me is this will happen sometimes if it's something like soup or like chicken and dumplings something like that where it's kind of like you said kind of mushy you you like get that sense of crunch in your mouth and I'll spit it in my hand just to to like avoid you know making a whole thing. yeah and then I look and it's all just mushy stuff and so I'm looking and I'm like there's nothing crunchy in here yeah it's like what the hell is it yeah <laughs> this is all just like mushy chicken and and dumpling and then you I never had that experience that it. sounds yeah. terrible you're at a table with other people or you know in exactly. public or whatever yeah and then I like that or whatever. way worse because usually eventually you're just like throw it out i guess we put it in my napkin and then assume i fine it's fine just that moment of unexpected texture in your mouth is like the biggest icky feeling and then the rest of the meal you're just sitting there waiting for something like that to happen again like you just cannot enjoy the meal like you were mm, i see i have a i have an accompanying one to this all right we're all wingmen we all enjoy a good chicken oh, wing right of course <laughs> we love we love a chicken we all wing. help each other get laid <laughs> <laughs> yeah this is not the same, but it's similar for me. I eat traditional wings. I like traditional wings on the bone. When you take a huge bite and you're trying to like get a ch chomp a bite off of a chicken wing, but the bone is like broken inside. Mm. So you get like a huge bite, but then the wing breaks in half and the like marrow of the bone kind of loops out. And I just don't know what to do with that. It sort of ruins it for me. Hmm. It's not the same, but it's not unsimilar. Yeah. Okay, I kind of like, I actually enjoy, not, I, I guess you can't really eat the marrow out of that one, so I guess it wouldn't really, I've never looked at it that way, because whenever I've seen wings and they break apart all the time, because they're chickens that they're raised to unhealthy and too much meat and they're way too heavy. They're and... elderly chicken wings, they've got osteoporosis. <laughs> Well, it's not because they're elderly, that's for sure. They, I don't think those chickens make it to old age. But that's another story for another depressing day. Um, but I do agree, like, some things can do that. But I, I, I do agree, Wade. Having something just, like, up here in your food that's not supposed to be there, just a weird yeah. crunch, a textural dissonance. Unexpected texture of any mm -hmm. kind, yeah. Yeah, it's no good. So, uh, two points for that. Thanks. All right, Bob, what do you got? What's your ick? What ick? All right, well, so I, I'm, I'm leading with the one I think will be controversial, because as far as I know, this is something that people generally really like. Okay. This is a texture thing with food. Uh, but for me, there's something about this version of this food that's too, like, slimy and, like, I don't know, chewy in a bad way, but also not chewy. It's marshmallow fluff. Mm. Yeah, actually I never had marshmallow fluff. That's like gooey marshmallow. It's like the inside of a marshmallow, but you can scoop it and put on, you know, you make like a fluffer nutter, which is like a sandwich with peanut butter, marshmallow fluff, and I think bananas on it, or maybe just peanut butter and marshmallow. Mm -hmm. And it's weird because I like marshmallows normally. The with the like coating on the whatever, the sugary coating on the outside, totally fine. Even toasted marshmallows, where they get all melty and gooey. Mm -hmm. That's like a whole different consistency from the weird, like, artificial, kind of fluffy, kind of slimy, kind of goopy texture that, like, jars of, of marshmallow fluff has. Mm -hmm. Even touching it makes me kind of, makes me ick. I've never had it outside of mixed into hot chocolate or, like, into, made into baked goods. I've never just had marshmallow fluff by itself. Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, that's interesting because well, like, that, problem. no, that would be like, I personally am like, that's fantastic. You, you get it between your fingers and you like rub it around and you see oh, it stretch and then you eat it. God. No, but I mean, like, I understand. Yeah, like, no. that's fine. <laughs> yeah, it's kind of like snot or semen. Mm. No, what? <laughs> Excuse me? <laughs> or semen. <laughs> Sneeman. You guys ever mixed up some Sneeman? No! I'm canceling this conversation. I'm averting it because the, hey, hey, hey. I'm getting away. Get away, get away. So the hey, hey, Stop. 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 Shut up. Shut up. Will, silence them again. Put in elevator music until it comes back to normal. All right, we're back. We've come back. Because the, I want to, okay, shifting gears a little bit for, away from food ick, because food ick's one thing. But the current definition of the ick that is probably known for people is less about food and more about vibes, right? I'm going to read you the Urban Dictionary entry for the ick. 
and it's got word here that I've never heard in my life. You could be on the chirpsy. <laughs> I don't know what that means. With a guy, huh? C H I R P S E. This entry was made. Oh, in now I know what it is. This entry was made in 2017. It's apparently to to flirt with someone. Oh, okay. Okay, some guy off the train was chirpsing me the other day. Was the example that was made in 2005. So this is oh, old. it's an English slang word. The London English slang word. That's why we don't know it. Okay, gotcha. Okay, that I guess that makes sense. This is just the top voted one. Anyway, you could be on a chirpsy with a guy or girl. Everything seems to be going fine. You think you like them, but then you suddenly catch the ick. From then on, you can't look at the person in the same way. You just progressively get more and more turned off by them, weirdly, and maybe for no reason in particular, grossed out by them. You'll cringe at the thought of you and them together. Nothing will be the same. You won't be able to do it any longer and eventually have to cut it off. Courtesy of Olivia from Love Island, were you pregnant? I don't know. Whatever. So I want to know about, like, the icks beyond just, like, food. So it could be, like, dating, which is the predominant, I think, definition of the ick. Have you ever been on a date and you, like, just discover, like, ooh, man, this is, this is no bueno. This is no bueno at all. I actually don't think I have, but I think it's because I've dated so few people. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I've not gone on many <clears throat> just regular dates. I've gone, like, on a handful, but I feel like, in my mind, mostly it'll be dudes that would be ick. Mm -hmm. I don't know that many I, girls that give like that ick feeling. I have a story about this if you guys need some time to. You have a dating story or yeah. just a general story? Oh, no, dating. dating story, yeah. Again, I, I don't want to say any names because uh, I'm sure they're perfectly lovely and, and whatever, but at the time it was just like an instant, like instant, uh, this is done kind of thing. So this is. Um... This is college, like some time in the middle of college. Bob, you never would have met this person. Um, you say, Bob, you've never been to college. You've never been to college before, right, Bob? I, yeah, you're not no, a college guy. No, no. No, no, no. I would no. remember. I would remember that. Um, uh, yeah. But it was like a, a few dates in, and, you know, it was, it was okay. Uh, but there was one time, I remember very distinctly, I was, I was on a call because he had gone on some trip, like a cruise or something. And basically, you know, we weren't, like, official or anything. But it was just, like, a few dates, so it was, like, whatever. Trip, I'm a very trusting guy, yada yada. We are on a call, and you know, she's telling me about the trip and like how it was. And then she gets to this point where it's like, Yeah, we're having a great time, you know, uh, uh, we're you know, having drinks, we had some food, and then you know, later on, the people were doing body shots off me, and it like just said super casually like that. And I was like, Wait, 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 what? I was like, Yeah, I was up on the table, and you know, like they were pouring uh, shots on me, and then people were just like taking body shots. And for like, I don't know about you guys. But that instantly gave me the ick. And I was just like, the thought of like someone that I was dating just being like, uh, okay, that seems interesting. And I was completely, instantly over it. Like, very much over it from that, that moment. And it was like almost immediately after I was like, ah, oh, this, this is not going to work out. Uh, I don't now, think it's hold on, hold on. Hmm? You'd save a lot of money on dishes. <laughs> You'd have some bonding experience with like some communal <laughs> drinking. I feel like this is a positive. All right, okay. I didn't think of it that way. You might be right about that. And I got like I got no judgment against if you're the type you go out and party, you want people to do body shots off of you. That's totally fine. Uh, I don't want other other applications. If you can do body shots off them, you could probably also do like milk and cereal. You can make oatmeal. <laughs> <laughs> you have a whole smorgasbord right in this person. <laughs> Yeah, All right, go on. No, I was thinking of the possibility. No, that's that's kind of it. There's no going on from it. Oh, I can think of more food. <laughs> yeah, go for it. I'll give you a point for every food. My God, what if like the toilets are down? You can use them as a bathroom. Like, there's all kinds of uses. <laughs> no, I'm taking away a point. What? <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, did that give you the ick? Yeah, so it gave me the ick. I don't think this is going to work out. Wait, uh, let's replace you with um, Bob Huku, your replacement. What about my body shot? <laughs> <laughs> All right, but anyway, you guys understand that? Like, like uh, that's, that was, for me, the moment of the ick. It wasn't even like, we. it was just over the phone, too. Uh, but it was just kind of like, okay, I guess that's not going to work. And I couldn't, I just couldn't approach the relationship the same way after that. Hmm. Hmm? Interesting. Yeah. I've got one person example I can think of. I remember in high school or junior high, I think it was junior high, I was like part of the basketball team. And um, there was a couple 
that uh, everyone always thought was like a cute couple. I was like, oh, they, yeah, they seem like a good couple. And uh, the dude was like really sweet to her and she seemed happy and everything. But like there was a day where they like said their goodbyes and like their sweet little kiss or whatever and separated and then like the dude joined the team. And like the moment he came over, he just immediately started talking like this big douchebag, like about the girl, like, oh man, yeah, I'm tapping that. It's fucking fantastic. Yada. It was just like this huge shift in like how he acted. And it was like he had a complete facade with her. And then like the real creepy douchebag self came out like when he was away from her. And that made me feel super fucking icky. Mm. I don't know if you've ever encountered that guy that like acts like a sweet normal dude or whatever. I, I don't know if that's a normal dude. A sweet dude. <laughs> and uh but then like like whenever it's just the guys, like his actual like shitty personality comes out. I don't know. Weird. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No, I, I definitely knew someone like that. It was just like like outside of any social circumstances, he was really fine. But whenever there was other girls in the room, he would just start shitting on every other guy as hard as possible. Like, I don't know what his strategy was. He was just the biggest douchebag. Like, he wasn't... I didn't like him. I hate this guy. But he's just, like, just in general, just fucking... I didn't understand he'd be talking to a girl and then feel the need to turn around to me or any other guy and just put them down, insult them right then and there. Yeah, that same kind of thing. Yeah. yeah just very strange. Maybe it was the same guy. I was wondering, because this went to the same school as I think. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. uh, let's say his name on three and uh, tell him what his name I don't remember the name either. Well, maybe, okay, let's just say a random name. And if we say the same name, then subconsciously we purge it out. Okay, ready? Yeah. One, three, two, one. one. David. Jason. <laughs> Sorry, I, know, I guess not. I guess it's all guys. Uh, all right, Bob, how about you? Uh, mine is not, I mean, it is a specific person that I've encountered, but it's more than one. And it's more of like a archetype of person. And this does not so much a thing in, in, as an adult, I guess. But growing up, going all the way through college, there was a certain vibe that people could give off where I would immediately get the ick very aggressively and like reconsider ever hanging around with them again. And it was that friend or that group of friends where you're just hanging out. Like you're in, the, you're in somebody's dorm room playing a game or whatever. You're just hanging out totally normally. Nothing crazy is happening. And then the guy or the group will begin doing something like smacking each other in the nuts really hard mm -hmm. and then just laughing about it. And the whole group laughs about it. And it's just like a thing, right? At any moment hanging around this person or these people, you have to be ready to get hit in the nuts by something or have them like try and stick their finger up your butthole or all this like weird juvenile stuff mm -hmm. even when i was young because like that sounds like middle school behavior to me i don't know how that strikes everyone else but that sounds like kids like being weird and, and you know douchebags to each other i experienced people like this all the way through college and a little bit after college and anytime that behavior came out i immediately went from like ah these guys are okay whatever we're friends or to like i need sleep this is the wrong vibe for me, and I don't understand that vibe. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, just like people that instantly show who they are. Like, just small things can reveal what they are, and you're just like, hmm, okay, I see this. And I guess it's a thing for me, too, of, like, that specific behavior. If you have a group of friends and you all want to do that, like, you know, it's kind of like the, the way the jackass guys were, are, maybe not as much anymore with each other. Like, they're just like that, right? They're just, mm -hmm. They think it's funny to, like, get hurt and do stuff and shave each other's hair, whatever. Mm -hmm. Just not for me. Yeah. You can do that. It's fine. Mm -hmm. I might silently judge you, but big ache. Yeah. That's a tough part about growing up, though, is when you're around, well, I don't know what age you're referring to exactly, because, yeah, that can happen any age. I know people are still like that. But when you're the friend that doesn't like it and, like, all your other friends want to be cool, so then, like, yeah, you get that peer pressure aspect of, like, I'll just be cool, dude. It's just a joke. And it's like, yeah, uh, I don't like it. Yeah, it always comes to that moment Awful where someone does something to me and I'm like, stop. Like, this is not yeah. funny. Stop. I don't like that. And the whole rest of the group, exactly like what you're saying. He's like, oh, come on, man. It's a joke. Mm -hmm. It's just line up. And I'm like, don't kick me in the nuts. That's not a joke. Mm -hmm. It yeah. hurts. Yeah. But yeah, like, I've definitely had several friend groups where that was kind of the vibe. Same reaction to all of them. Man. And, and yeah, I think that it can apply to definitely things outside of relation, uh, like romantic relationships. It's just like any relationship. You can you can just get a bad feeling. I think I talked about. No, oh, no, no, no. I was just gonna say. I think I talked about like the in in that hotel this one time, and I just got these like 
bad vibes from the person working the desk. I couldn't explain it at all. Mm. And it, this isn't me repeating a topic. I've been addressing the fact that I've probably talked about this before. But it's just like, mm. that's, yeah, no, no, no. It's just like, that's it. It was the ick. I, I couldn't explain it. But it just like instantly, something about it, unconscious, what, I mean, it's not like there's even like a book to understand really body language or, I don't know, fucking pheromones maybe? Who knows? Just like yeah, bad vibes. Bad vibes. Or phobia moans. No, no, no. The episode wasn't even called phobias. It was called fears and fetishes. And they're very different things. Ah, <laughs> fear a moan. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fear dishes. Just say what you got. Say what you came to say. So I remember going um, to Indie PopCon one year and I was walking around outside, just like walking around the city. Mm -hmm. And we like went to lunch or whatever. And actually, I like downtown Indianapolis a lot. And I think I was wearing like a Bengals shirt or something, uh, or UC. Bear I think it was UC Bearcat shirt. And this guy's like, "Yo, UC Bearcats, awesome!" I, you know, I went to UC. He's like, "Oh, awesome! That's awesome, dude." He's like, "Yeah, did you like the watching the Bob Huggins? Like, you know, we just, we small talk about the Bearcats." And I was like, "Oh, this is really cool. We're into some Cincinnati dude who's talking to me about sports." And then came the, "By the way, can you loan me like I don't know, twenty bucks or something?" I uh, and it's like, "Oh no!" Like he buttered me up, started this conversation, was like talking about sports is like oh that's really cool it's just a random person have a nice conversation and then it became like can i have money mm -hmm. or like sales people whenever they like you start to like you're like no actually we like the the dude the dude that came to my house trying to do the bug thing i was like actually we just had it done because we had and he's like can i come in and see the receipt just i don't know there's a certain like moment sales people or i guess people that are like looking for money they get to where just like they cross a line where it goes from like okay well you know this is at least a normal conversation to like just ick Mm -hmm. That that gave me both of those situations gave me ick. Mm -hmm. Having like a five minute conversation with somebody about sports turning into like, hey, can I have twenty bucks? Just like, ugh, come on. Yeah, I don't know. It feels it just makes you feel used. Oh yeah, oh, you feel like a used tissue or something. Yeah, it was like I think I talked about this story too, and we can tell all the stories. We can. I feel like we have to defend this every time. But I I talked about like uh, in I was at Chipotle and there was this guy who was like asked like if I could buy him a burrito and I was like yeah absolutely like sure let's do it I was decided to be generous that day and take him in and then he orders three burritos and I was like I I can't I'm a college student I can't afford this I I can barely afford I was like I was just trying to be generous and then he like orders it he gets them all and then he gets to the cashier and just like as soon as the food's in the back he grabs the bag out of the cashier's hand and he walks out the door or was it two my bed's have been too. But either way, like, it's more than the one that I agreed to purchase, and then he walks away from it, and I'm just left there. I had to pay for three burritos, because I got one myself. That was it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's like, man, I'm just, oh, man, I'm trying to help, and I just get used at the end of it, and it's, like, it's just unfortunate. But anyway. Yeah. All right. More, is it, Keith? more icks. More icks. Uh, does it have to be people-related? No. Mm, more icks. Uh, what about that feeling whenever you're just, like, I don't know, normally walking around doing stuff and then like you uh, make your hand into a fist and then just all of a sudden two of your fingers are sticking together and you have no idea where the sticky came from. <laughs> <laughs> like, it could be from a door handle, it could be from touching like a wrapper, a soda. You don't, I you think don't, you I know what you're talking what about. What it was you touched that might have been sticky. It, like ugh, that icky feeling of like, what is on my hands? What is on my finger? I, I, I don't like keeping my hands dirty. Once they're like dirty, it's fine. But like the, the process of like having clean hands and then something gets on them that makes them dirty or sticky, that gives me the ick like oh, every time. Oh no, is this Sneeman? Oh God, how'd that get out of here? Could be either one. Could be <laughs> Snit. The bag of Sneeman I had in my pockets leaking. Ah. What, what am I gonna eat later now? <laughs> oh no, 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 no. Well, that would just- Sneer wax. I need you to stop. <laughs> Snoop. <laughs> Well, he said schnitt earlier, so I think I think that qualifies. Oh, but Snoop is cuter. <laughs> I don't know if it's cute. I mean, if it's someone cute. came up to you and was like, hey, do you want some sh schnitt? You would be like, no, I don't think so. <laughs> well, if someone came up and was like, hey, you want to share some Snoop? You'd be like... I think I would say no either way because it's still mucusy shit. Well, you don't know that. Well, you don't you... see what it is. It's the word. You're yeah. assessing the word first. Yeah. Also, the phrase mucusy shit, I think, just gave me the ick. So, <laughs> yay. Yeah, good, great. Yeah, all of this is giving me the ick. You ever just talking and then you say something out loud? <laughs> yes. And I then do. you're just like, oh, oh ick. <laughs> yes, I do. <laughs> yeah, this podcast. Oh, God. Distractible. Ick. I don't know. I don't know if we did this on purpose. I didn't. But uh, specifically in the uh, subreddit over the last couple of weeks, people were really complaining about all the mucus talk we had going on. And what oh, good. <laughs> mm -hmm. What's about? Very specifically, we're like, I'm fine with everything. Baby poop, facials, butt chugging, but mucus? 
too far, guys. It's really <laughs> gross. <laughs> we circled back to it just for you. No, that's not what it is because I I, I was I said food was like a, like a very or anything liquid yeah, whatever. It's not my fault. The ick has a definition <laughs> that is most commonly known is due to relationships and people. It's related to vibes. It's not necessarily about goop. Oh, no, that's fine. You know, I mean, this is not, this is like the coldest take. This is the deep freeze as far as takes go. But I would say the main place I experience the ick, my ick, <laughs> some ick, an ick, whatever, <laughs> is on social media. Oh, I yeah. feel like there's a lot of ways on social media that it presents itself. But I think the, the one that's been happening a lot over the last, I don't know, five to ten years, however long Twitter has really been blown up and the other thing, is when someone that I follow, celebrity, expert, journalist, whatever. Someone that I follow who I was like, oh, this person posts really good stuff about this video game I like. So I'll follow them just to get the, you know, get the good updates on what's going on. And then they'll just post something that's like not necessarily even related to their main thing, mm -hmm. unrelated to their game journalism. Yeah. But it's just like a really fucking out there personal take or like conspiracy theory stuff, like something where they post it and it's not related to anything they've ever talked about. And I read it and I'm like, oh, ugh. Yeah, I, I, like I value your opinion, and it doesn't necessarily make me stop following them. But it it goes from this thing where I'm like, I follow this person. It'd be cool if I met them at like a convention someday or something. Like it. So like, God, I hope I never run into you on the street. Yeah. Ooh. Do, are you talking about a specific tweet that I'm I have pulled up right now? No. Oh no, this is happening well, to me with. Really know what that is? No, no, this is happening to me with several several like personalities and, and people that I have followed where, you know, my entire perception changed and it was, it was very icky. No, no. Like, it's, what, what do you have? <laughs> it's been it's been making the rounds, a lot of quote tweets, a lot of people being like, oh my god. I'm not going to say who it is in the name or whatever, but this is the tweet in question. The content. Boys want arm candy. Uh, Men want someone who isn't on birth control, is loving, graceful, who wants to buy a farm, start homesteading, homeschool the kids who's obsessed with cows and is dying to make fresh breast milk ice cream i saw like, that oh huh. uh, yeah <laughs> so it's like i'm fine like you you can you know, want a partner that's loving grace whatever the birth control thing is fine if you want to fail that's fine the dying to make fresh breast milk ice cream <laughs> that's such a finish it's such a like it i think it stuck the landing but only because it landed in such a mucusy pile you know what i mean like <laughs> I, 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 <laughs> it's it's just, the ick. No, that's, listen, that's exactly the right thing, though. Yeah. It landed in the same vibe range as the mucus stuff. It really did. It's the exact same problem. Yeah. There's other problems with this and the overall yeah. tone and the probably the person themselves, but it's just like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, no, that's one that, that's a, a very common one that gets me in this, in this vein is just random, like, hyper misogyny stuff. Mm -hmm. And it's, you know, I'm of the opinion of, you know, you're allowed to prefer whatever traits and qualities you might want to have mm -hmm. in a partner. If you're, you know, marrying someone or committing to someone, whatever. You're allowed to, like, have that preferences. Yeah. But, man, do some people have some crazy-ass preferences. Yeah. <laughs> and, and or some really concerning-sounding, like, just, I don't know. It doesn't, it doesn't prove anything. Yeah, and I and I'm not, I don't like come after these people or block them or anything. But like, I might block them if I just don't want to hear this bullshit anymore. But some people will just—it's not people. Some dudes will just say some shit where it's like, whoa, whoa. Yeah, yeah I and don't know if anyone wants that breast milk ice cream. I think that's just you. They'll say it with such confidence too. They will stand, and people don't realize this. The social media is the equivalent of standing on a rock and shouting as loud as you can. Most of the time, people are going to ignore you, but a lot of the time, you might get a crowd around you, uh, and so they just stand on this rock, and it's like, I love breast milk ice cream! I want someone to let me make it from them! Give me your... Ma like, it's like, holy shit, man. Yeah. You don't need to scream it. That's an inside thought. How many of these are serious versus how many of these are... You think, like, they posted it, like, as a joke or just to get a rise out of people? I yeah, know. I Absolutely. think it's somewhat serious, but at the same time, it's like, well, do you really want to... Unless you're, you're like, in the business of just trolling people in general, which tons of people are. It's like, do you want people to get that misconception? Parody's a fine line on the internet when it's just text. You could type slash SRS all you want. Like, it doesn't always mean that it's going to work out that way. 
I could totally see people typing stuff like that and just like, I'm going to post this as absolutely serious and see how many people think I'm serious just to get a laugh out of it. I could totally see a lot of people doing that. Oh, so I don't even do think a lot of it is meant to be like humor or parody of any kind. Cynical, my cynical sorry, side of my brain sees that and, you know, it gets my gut reaction, but I basically never engage with it either because that's, that's what they want. My mm -hmm. cynical brain sees that as like, well, this is just some dude who probably has some of the first like two thirds of the list of things, probably exactly what he wants. Mm -hmm. He wants someone who's, you know, submissive to him, calls him sir or whatever, all this, you know, <laughs> all, all the like classic stuff that the, that the, you know, guys think happened in, well, probably did happen in the 1950s and guys are like, I want that. That should be my life. Yeah, but then the, the last like two or three things on the list are just to get reactions. It's just to catch those people who will see that and have a similar reaction to like the way we feel about it or or a harsher reaction and they'll respond like they're going to debate with this person. And like I get that urge and I've fallen into that trap before. It's bait. I think we did an episode on that. We should do another one. I, I think it's literally just bait. The breast milk ice cream, bait. Bait to get people responding to be like, ooh, that's gross. Bait to set someone off who's like, well, all the rest of that is pretty classic, you know, misogynistic men stuff. And I'm sure he'll find a girl that does what, what he wants. You know, there's plenty of women out there who want that kept life or whatever. You know, they want what they want. It's perfectly fine. But then the last one, breast milk ice cream, they're like, God, oh, not only is that offensive, that is fucking gross. And it's like, it's bait. It's bait. And it's probably not sincere. Yeah. But that's my cynical side. Is no. that all of that... All the claims at the end of the tweet, the last thing you read, if it makes you outrage, if it makes you ick, if it sounds you know, like horrific or disgusting or is way worse than the rest of the stuff that's in the tweet, that's the bait. Yeah. What if breast milk ice cream is good? I don't. It's not. I'm okay. There are certain experiences a lot of people are like, oh, try everything. It's like, I'm okay not trying everything. I'm okay. I mean, I can't say I've had breast milk ice cream, but I don't know if we've talked about this. I have a son now. He's a baby. Uh oh, I don't know if I've mentioned this, but I have a Manny and I have a new baby who take care of him. Unless you're too grossed out by it, when you have a baby and you're, especially because Mandy is uh, breastfeeding him, you pump the breast milk, you have bottles in the fridge, you freeze it, whatever. You eventually taste breast milk as a parent because you have to make sure that it's like the right temperature and it's, you know, you dab it on the back of your hand and then you're like, well, I don't want to wipe that on my shirt. I already have a bunch of spit up on my shirt. So I've tasted breast milk. It doesn't taste bad. That is not a flavor that I think needs to be ice cream. I don't think ice creaming it will improve the flavor of breast milk very much at all. Mm. Interesting Maybe point. You need to pasture. Oh, sorry, Mark. No, what's wrong with me? I'm just trying to speak. I'm just gonna say that's an interesting point. That's it. You could go ahead. <laughs> it's just so hard to tell when you're talking because you've gone out so much. No. Well, you didn't there, so that just sounded like you being upset. Will make me cut out dramatically. No, 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 no. I'm assuming your local recording's fine, so everyone listening is going to think that we're an idiot, but you know, <laughs> for us, you're cutting out a lot. All right, we, we are all three one idiot. Yeah, true enough. All right, well, any other ickables here? <laughs> what? No, sorry, man. That word just, no. Get me here? Yeah, no, that one was. Yeah, yeah, that's just, that here? <laughs> Any other ickables on your radars? That almost didn't work, but I got you. I got okay. it. I would say mine, mine all focus around food, but I feel like the food ones are all similar for me, too. So that's, you know. And I'm not really a picky person about food, but for some specific things. I saw the unexpected things. I don't like the unexpected sticky or stepping like in something wet. It's like, oh God, what did I step in? Like, I don't know. Things like that give me the icks. Mm. All right. This is a shitty take on my part, I love but it. it is a thing that, that gives me a little bit of ick. And it's, I, w I would never like tip a waiter less because this happened, but I find it off-putting. When you're in a restaurant or you're otherwise in any sort of setting where you're dealing with like a waiter, a salesperson in the hospital. When Mandy was in the hospital after the baby came, uh, we dealt with a ton of nurses coming and taking care of us and they were all excellent. Some people talk about personal stuff way too loudly and or in way too of a public location while they're like at work, especially around customers. Mm. This happened in the hospital. This nurse did not work our room or whatever so i did not know this person and i'm sure she's perfectly nice and all the nurses were excellent at their jobs and did such a great job but they were like at the nurse's station at like three in the morning and i came out of our room to just like get some air walk around a little 
to stretch my legs. And the nurses are at the nurse's station talking super loudly about like how much travel nurses get paid and how much they're getting paid and talking shit like, oh, well, I'm just gonna quit then. This is some bullshit, blah, blah, blah. And like talking a bunch of totally reasonable shit. I'm sure they don't get paid enough. I know that the situation with travel nurses, especially since the pandemic began, is frustrating. Travel nurses will just go around and work, you know, at different hospitals for exorbitant pay because the hospital is desperately in need of any nurse to fill a shift, you know, that sort of thing. I'm not saying all, anything they were saying was untrue or unfair, but I was like dying, like a, a two hours of sleep over three days, like trying to deal with a newborn baby, trying to take care of Manny as she's recovering, all this stuff. And then they're out there like talking and laughing and being rowdy and talking shit about work at work like 20 feet away from the door to my room where my new family is. And it's like, I don't begrudge you that at all. Work is a tough, in America and around the world, work is tough, income is tough. People are getting absolutely screwed and, and fired and or, you know, working the job that should be like three people, all this stuff. I don't begrudge that at all. But in front of me, when I'm like out of it and I was trying to, you know, just trying to get some air and get away from stuff, it just gives me that like, yeah. Really? That loudly at three in the morning here on the on the maternity floor? Like, come on, is it like a break room or something? I don't know. I think I can understand that. I do understand that. It's like keeping it professional when it needs to be professional versus like it, it's like bedside manner kind of extends because if you can hear it from where your bed is, yeah, I think it might apply uh for bedside manner. I don't begrudge like the medical industry is tough and like you said it's really really hard uh, especially for overworked professionals and it's not their fault that you know insurance companies are gouging prices and making it extremely difficult to get basic care you know they're they're fighting that fight but at the same time it's like it's like professionalism anywhere yeah if the even if you were in Starbucks and all they were doing was like shitting about how terrible Starbucks was it's like oh, I get what you're saying but I'm uncomfy over here I'm just I, I feel like I'm part of the problem yeah. I ordered a coffee and it's my fault yeah. like you know it's i don't fault them for those thoughts and i totally applaud their ability to think those and talk about them but it's also just like i'm suddenly part of this conversation i don't yeah. know what to do you're still supposed to have a professional demeanor in front of your customers or clients or whatever have you yeah mm -hmm. yeah. yeah and like that's a thing that's going to happen and i'm sure i've done that too i'm sure i worked uh, mark and i actually worked at the same restaurant for a while and yeah, i worked in restaurants and places and you know that that just happens because you work a lot and you're there and sometimes you have conversations there's just a, and i i like feel like it's a shitty take on my part like i'm just a judgy person but i've had it happen a lot more in the context of like waiters and restaurants and and sales people where it's like okay well you were just over here being all super sweet and nice and you're you know you're doing a fine job as a as a waiter but also you're like talking shit about your ex-girlfriend where my entire table our whole section over here can clearly hear you that's a weird choice mm -hmm. i don't need to be part of your personal stuff i just want some you know barbecue and, and again i don't begrudge them exes can be shitty life can be hard work is hard it's totally fair but it's just like at, in those settings i don't know gives me a little ick makes me feel bad about myself but it does give me a little ick yeah i hear you i thought of one that's not quite I, I don't i think it still qualifies as ick but it's like a combination of feelings when you're playing a video game or watching a movie or show and like uh there's a long-running character who like you've come to like really like like a spoiler alert everybody but like in the new star wars trilogy you know luke no. and it's like you get to an episode you get to one of the movies and it's like just don't kill luke just don't kill luke come on don't be, don't pull the trope of all oh, we gotta kill the old to bring in the new just don't do it don't do it and then they do that that makes me feel icky too whenever i know something like that's gonna happen because it's like oh it's so predictable they're gonna have to kill the old person that you really like because they got this new cat they want to focus on them so they gotta get rid of the old mentor that trope and some tropes like that also give me the ick because one i feel them coming and two it just gives you a bad there's a lot of reasons to hate losing a character you like just because you feel like that they feel like they have to do it i don't know if it fully qualifies but it that makes me feel icky in a similar sense i would i would offer a counterpoint to that because i do get what you're saying and a lot of people are very divisive about that particular movie but what it, what it could offer is like you know actors can't play those characters forever and oftentimes those those characters can have like this open-ended thing um where they don't have a send-off and they don't have like a proper uh ending and, and like i'm totally fine with characters having deaths in stories uh i think there it can go too far and in weird directions when like with game of thrones you just like do that for the wow factor of it all um but there are certain things and and the one thing i did like about last Jedi is i kind of did like that death but this is getting completely off topic like i i did it, it, it's something even was... that one in particular if you like that one just it happens so often where 
everyone feels like they have to kill the mentor. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, so I'm just curious. Do you, do you feel like it icks you because you feel like it's cliche? Like the movie maker just did this because it's what you're supposed to do, and you're like, yeah, uh, like, come times, on. Yes. Or is it because like you love the character, and then you know, you feel angry, sad, icked because they killed off a good character, and you don't like them? Yeah, loving the character makes it hurt. But there's certain times where, like, even if I'm not super attached to a character, you just know it's coming. Like, you start playing a video game, and, like, there's someone mentoring you, and it's like, well, they're going to die. Might as well not get attached. And, it, and then it happens, it's like, okay, well, I knew it was coming, at least. It just, be, it's, I don't know, it happens so often, and it's become so predictable. Like, even with, like, someone watching The Last Jedi, it was like, don't do it. I know you're going to do it. There's no way you won't do it, but don't do it. Just don't do it. And then, like, they give you the whole, like, aha, oh, he's gonna die here. It's like, okay, well, at least it's a cool last stand. He didn't die! He died. Okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Like, the, the tease there was just, like, a slap. I don't know, that whole movie was kind of a slap in the face. I, but I'll, I wouldn't say there's so much an ick, though. It's more of a pet peeve, which I think is a different. That might be true. That might be true. There, mm -hmm. I, there's something there's about it where, a when, I, I guess whenever ick. you're expecting it to happen, and then it does happen, but you're hoping it won't happen, where you feel like that, ick. I don't know. It's, it's that same, ick. That comes out of my mouth when it does happen. Yeah, I believe that's per, that's spelled E U G H, and we're looking for I C K. So I see. unfortunately, that brings us to a close, and uh, Wade does not get points for that last one. Unfortunately, can't believe it. Okay, would you guys unbelievable? Like to, would you guys like to know the tally? No. Yes. yes. Very much. All right, the eyes have it. In last place is me with negative three points. I really did not do my best. I underperformed the whole time. I I I. Right out of the gate, I kind of uh, hamstrung myself. So, that's bad on my part. Uh, but the winner of this episode, with a glorious five points, mostly just because I stopped counting points uh, halfway through there, uh, is Bob! Woo! I thought you were going to say with, with one point because I stopped counting points, but Wade was at negative one. Boo! Boo! Wade is the rightful winner. I can't believe this. I don't actually think so. He, he got negative... One point. Wade should have won. I don't care what Mark's points were. Wade, then, is, Wade is the winner. Wade should always win. Thank you, subreddit Bob. I agree. He got two and then he got negative one for whatever offended me. What gave, what gave me the ick. Which I guess to the episode, I, I should actually make that one point. Yeah, it seems like kind of a success. Yeah, but even with that point, he wouldn't have it. Oh. Because you stopped cutting points halfway through? No, I can't, I can't point the whole way through. It's Bob! <laughs> Congratulations, Bob! All right. Subreddit, help me! They can't help you now. They've all got the ick. They stopped we're listening. We're Wade Supremacy subreddit. <laughs> help me. All right. Ick subreddit, help me. Bob, <laughs> what is your winner speech? Um, I feel really good about this. My, one of my biggest fears in life is that I am a person who gives someone else in the world the ick. I'm sure it happens. Because I'm sure everyone gives someone else the ick in some way, because that's just how the world is. But if you think that about me, never tell me and stay away. Then I can pretend like it doesn't happen. Fair enough, very fair. Wade, loser speech. I know I've given you the ick. You know who you are out there, and I'm glad I did it. Talk about sneeming some more. Uh, thanks for hosting <laughs> a great episode, uh, Mark. That's what I meant to say. Uh, uh -huh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> sneeming, snot, snoo, sniz. <laughs> Schnit, noop. Schnit, noop. Schnoop. Yep, all the above. Thank you, everybody, for listening. You can find us all at your various social media handles. Lord Manning and 777, my scrim, and uh, myself, Mark and Blyer. Uh, be sure to follow this podcast forever and ever and ever. Uh, be our BFFs uh, forever. And we will never give you the ick again so long as you only follow us and no other podcast in the world. Thank you. Uh, and uh, podcast out. The unelicited porn hub contract arrived by special delivery. When open, it was a very interesting time at the family home. Why would they offer you a fluffer job, Bob? And why does it have due to your magnificent performance Monday, Bob? Bob was stunned into silence. Let us hope it does not affect his jocular verbosity next week. What? On Distractable. Okay. Well, that was an interesting episode about the ick. Um, my icks. When it comes to relationships, I haven't... This is gonna, it's gonna sound very sad. But I haven't been in a relationship where I've noticed an ick. I've been on multiple dating sites and trying to find a boyfriend that way. Like, with dating sites, like, with, um... Like, you know, like... Like, um, 
you know, all the ones that say that, oh, you're going to find a lover soon, don't worry. But, you know, you find just, like, icky guys who, like, you know, just want you for sex and that's about it. Um, but in terms of, like, things, um... That might be loved by everybody. Um, so I'm a very sensible guy. Like, I have this thing in my brain where if I touch a certain thing, I react a certain way. Like with like with comfortable things, I like comfort. But there's like some things like. Taking a shower, for instance. I do take showers, but it's a pet peeve and an ick to me because my senses are different than yours. So when I feel the rain or, like, drops of water on me, I just feel like, mm, mm, okay, mm, mm, you know? But the ironic thing is I don't like when water is purposely on me. But I love the sound of rain. How does that work? I don't know. But yeah, that's the only ick I can think of. Other than just like picking up dog poop when I had to do my dog job. Um, but n nothing relationable besides like weird guys on the internet. Trying to get me for sex, and that's the only thing. Mm, yeah, I don't know. But, um, yeah, tell me what your guys' icks are, because I can't think of any for myself. And the examples they gave did not help, so. Mm, yeah. Well, I'm gonna go work out some more, because I actually stopped my workout midway to do this episode. I was actually gonna do this episode while working out. But I decided not to do that because I don't think you guys want to see me jumping around exercising because no one wants to see a fat piece of larb move around. That's not a very um, flattering thing to see. So yeah, I don't want to intense you guys of stuff like that, but I'm going to go work out again. And I got to go do laundry, so I got to do a lot of stuff today. And I don't have to work today, so it's, you know, win-win. Um, but yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys later. This is an M-D-D-D-Y. I don't know, but I'll see you guys next time. Peace.